Hello and welcome to another video from Cryptical Photography Studio. I'm Ben McCallum and today I'm going to show you, those of you with Mac computers who are new how to use iPhoto to improve your family photos quickly and cheaply because the software comes with your computer so if you want to get about doing better photos and actually editing them yourself this is the quickest cheapest way of doing it. It is a little bit limited but if you don't want to spend any money it will still do a good job. So first of all we want to open up iPhoto you obviously want to import your photographs. I won't go through that. I'm sure you can figure that out for yourself. I'm trying to keep this as quick as possible. So in the interface here, you'll actually notice that it doesn't actually look like it has any editing tools. What you need to do is come down to the very bottom right hand corner over here where it says edit. It's a little pencil. Once you click on that, it will bring up all the editing tools. There's a whole bunch of things that you can do here which come straight out of the box. This little enhance tool is quite handy. It will actually just do an automatic version and pretty much almost does what you need to do straight off. It's the quickest way of doing it. You have the straighten tool, crop tool, and the retouch tool. I'm just going to revert that back to its original state. Now, this retouch tool, I will actually come back to in a moment because it will be able to see the effect a little bit better. In the effects tool, it's got a whole bunch of uh, quick ways of going about doing things. You can vignette the photo, which you know can add a little bit of mood, but we don't. I'm sure you can figure that out on your own. What you actually need to get your head around are these controls down here. So what these actually refer to is certain areas of the editing which that enhance tool does all on its own. So the exposure toolbar up here increases or decreases the exposure level which your camera initially took the photo at. So if we bring that up, you'll notice that it brings the exposure up. So now it's an overexposed photo. Bring it the other direction, it's an underexposed photo. That's fairly straightforward. The contrast increases the difference between the highlights and the blacks, so it can either uh, it can either exaggerate or exaggerate. That's not a word, or uh, decrease the effect. So you'll notice there that's increasing it. Everything gets darker in the dark areas, and the lighter areas get lighter. In the opposite direction, it makes it a flatter image. So we'll just undo that one. The saturation increases the color throughout your image. So obviously we can bring that up. So if you want a nice pretty photo, if you've got a photo of a flower or something like that, best way, just hit it with the saturation. You'll get lots of colors and it'll look amazing. The definition tool down here increases the sort of the, the lines and the definition between any sort of object. So if there's a change in color or you know contrast, it will actually emphasize those. So you'll notice if you have a look over in this area over here, there's a whole bunch of trees which you can't see. So if I increase that all the way up, it actually puts a more definition into here so you can actually see more of the individual trees. Might not be able to see it on YouTube because it's going to be a bit smaller, but trust me, that's what it does. We have the highlights area. Now this highlights bar will decrease any of the highlight areas or the bright areas and bring their brightness down. So you can get more detail within an image if you've lost inf uh, information when you first took the photo. Best place to usually look for it is in the sky because that is where you'll see most of the differences. So if you pay attention to the sky up here, whilst I bring this highlights area down, you'll notice that it brings a bit more detail into the clouds, but it starts to make the image look flat. So you need to use it sparingly, but if you use it in the correct amount, you can actually get quite a good result from it. Now the shadows is similar sort of things to the highlight, but the complete opposite. It gets the dark areas and makes them brighter. So if you pay attention down over here in this shadow area down here and the person on the motorbike, if I bring that up, you'll notice we've just gained a lot more information and we can now see what's all around here. So that's what the shadows does. Again, if you go too far, it makes you a flat image, looks bad. Don't do that. The sharpen tool here, I would recommend anyone that's actually planning on getting a photograph printed, you want to apply at least a small amount of sharpening because it gives a more crisp line around sort of um, around objects, sort of like the definition, but kind of different at the same time. It's hard to explain. You'll just have to sample it yourself and see what it does. But you need to sharpen your photographs when you're going to print them because they'll print better and it won't look fuzzy on the print. It'll actually have... A defined line bef between the differences throughout the image. So we'll just increase the sharpness a little bit. 
And if I just go all the way, it might actually be able to see what it's done. So it actually puts a, a sharper line around here. Now, what you'll notice is as it gets brighter and brighter um, by using the shadows down here, you start to get the noise, which is effectively grain uh, in the old format for anyone that used to use film. You'll notice it gets all this nasty little graininess down here, which is on a computer is referred to as noise. Now, what this tool here does is it sort of grabs information from the pixels around them and blends them together to sort of blur them a little bit, which then it obviously gets rid of the, um, the noise because they're not there because they've been merged together with uh, pixels around them. So this can actually be good. Um, it can work a little bit, but the problem with it is, you'll notice the further up I go, the more it starts to look like a painting. So if you're going for the painting look, nothing wrong, go for it. But again, it's one of those things you have to use sparingly or it sort of detracts from it being a photograph and turns it more into being a piece of art. Um, again, if you don't mind having that, it's fine. Now down here, this is the white balance. It says temperature, but what this is, this is a white balance. Um, this is what you can correct photo with. So if the white balance your camera has taken it with is completely wrong, Indoors is generally a good um, is a good problem for that. You know, if you've got one of the little point and shoot cameras which can go underwater, you are definitely going to need it on that. You need to find something which was remotely white or a nice grey, and use that as your little your little point. So say we had no, that's probably not the best indicator. That's probably going to do a better job. Okay, so say your photograph. This is completely exaggerated, by the way. Say your photograph comes onto your computer like this and you go, ooh, that looks terrible, that photo is completely ruined. Never lose faith, you can always save a photo. So if you grab the temperature, you click on this little dropper area and you choose an area which is should have been a white area or a nice gray. I'm gonna go for his beanie down here because that looks like it might work. Click on that, increases the white balance to where it should be. Hey presto, you now have a photograph that works. Now, the last thing on this little menu area I'm going to show you is this little diagram up here. This represents all of the shadows and the different colors throughout the images. So this area where it says zero represents the shadow areas or the black areas. This area up here where it says 100 is the white areas or the highlight areas. So as I increase this, you'll notice the black areas get blacker. As I decrease this area here, the highlighted areas get brighter. And then if I grab this middle one and go in either direction, it does does whatever I tell it to do. So that can be handy if you've kind of used all of the information you need down here and you need to do just a little bit more editing. You can come back and you can use this little area down here. Now, the last thing that I want to show you is if we come back over to this quick fix area, this is where we can straighten our photograph. And you'll notice there's a little dust spot here. I don't know whether you better see it, but... You don't want dust spots, they ruin photos when you print them and you put it on a wall and all you can see is this little black dot. And once you're focused on it, you just can't forget about it. So first of all, we're gonna straighten this image. I'm gonna click on the straighten tool and you'll notice it gives you these nice little horizontal lines. What we wanna do is we wanna match this horizontal line up here with what the horizontal should have been on the horizon. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna grab the angle, I'm gonna spin it around until they sort of match up. Obviously, you can spend a lot more time, but that's good enough. We'll click Done. We'll come down to this little button here which says Retouch. Now, what this does is grab the information from around the spot that I've clicked and clone it to where I've clicked. So, if you've got blemishes on someone's face and you want to get rid of that, use this tool. It is incredibly simple. You just go down, you grab it, and you move the size to how big you want it, and then you find the dust spot or the blemish you want to get. You click on it. Problem's gone. So that is the quickest way for you to fix photos. You know, it's a quick cleaning tool and it will improve your photos tenfold. The last little thing that you want to do, if you want to make it look like a sort of a panoramic photo, something which is a nice landscape shot, you might want to just increase the, um, the, the width in comparison to the height. So you just grab the crop tool. I'm going to grab the little edges down here. I'm going to say I want it to be about yay big. Click done. 
you have yourself a panoramic photo. Now, obviously, if you spend a lot of time, you can get a good photo. This has just been incredibly quick. I hope this helps. We got heaps more videos which are still to come. As I said, if you've just got a Mac and you want to start editing your photos without having to spend any more money, you can do a fair bit on this, but I would recommend when you get a little bit more serious and you want to have more fun and get more effects into a photo, if you can afford it, start having a look into Photoshop, even just download the trial and give it a try. Uh, we've got other videos on there which will give you a quick walkthrough on how to use that as well. Uh, hopefully this helps. We'll have more videos and we'll catch you again soon. Thanks for watching.